Hello, I'm Lucy Rodriguez Leon. I'm a lecturer in early childhood at the Open University, and I'm also one of the co conveners of the Early Years Special Interest Group <coughs> at UKLA. In this presentation, I'm going to share some findings and data from my doctoral study. And this data was gathered um, a couple of years before COVID. However, it exemplifies the significance of text in the lives of very young children. And based on study findings, I'll share some thoughts about how text can be a vehicle for young children to make sense of the world, make relationships and make identities as we emerge into the new normal. As we all know from birth, uh, babies and young children growing up in Western societies are surrounded by and immersed in a vast variety of written and multimodal texts, which they engage with through a, a wide variety of media. And each of these encounters can be thought of as a literacy event. What interested me <clears throat> in my doctoral study was how are those different literacy events um, experienced by the individual child? What's it like for the individual? How do they feel? Um, why do young children engage with text? What's in it for them? So the research comprised a series of ethnographic case studies with five participant children aged three and four years old. Over eight months, I joined them at their preschool setting, visited them at home, joined them on trips in the local community, uh, to the supermarket, for example. I gathered video data and field notes as the primary data set, um, but also drew on interviews with parents and practitioners and data from some very interesting mediator dialogues uh, with children. To theoretically frame the study, I delved into both cultural historical theory and some of the post-humanist literature. Firstly, I directed the analytic lens to how the dynamic relations between the focal child, social others, and the text and other materials unfolded over the course of the literacy event. Then I directed the lens to how those relations were experienced at a personal level. And I theorised personal experience through contemporary understandings of Vygotsky's concept of Peris Chevanier, which roughly translates to lived through experience. So just as a very brief overview, in explaining the concept of Peris Chevanier, Vygotsky used the metaphor of a refracting prism. And this depicts Peris Chevanier as each individual's unique prism and made up of their collection of significant lived experiences. And of course, when light is refracted through a prism, the image or what one sees is determined by the shape of the prism. So from this viewpoint, how a literacy event or any situation for that matter is experienced is not a simply a reflection of what's happening in the environment, but rather is refracted through one's personal prism of Perish Vanier. So my analysis of video data aimed to catch sight of and interpret how each focal child was experiencing their encounters with text. The aspect of the findings I want to focus on here respond to my question around why young children engage with text and what's in it for them. I mean, after all, they might not be considered readers and writers in the conventional sense. So what is it that they get from it? And what surfaced from my analysis was that texts are so much more than carriers of information. The children engage with text for innumerous reasons, but essentially their intent and purpose was in pursuit of three overarching goals. To make meaning, to make relationships and to make identities. And oftentimes, actually, it was a fluid combination of all three. But I don't think that young children are unique here. Um, the same, I think, could be said for any competent reader, but possibly the, um, the aims and intents of these um, were more transparent in the activities of very young children. So I'd like to exemplify this uh, with a short vignette. This is an event that evolved quite spontaneously in the role play area of the preschool setting. And the vignette focuses on a young lady whom I call Anya. She was four years and three months old when this data was gathered. And she had selected a comic, which is based on popular TV programmes. And I selected the Tesco's Christmas catalogue and sat down next to her. Anya initially pretended to be sleeping. She was snoring loudly under the comic. After a few moments, I asked, are you having a good snooze there? 
Anya jumped up saying, tricked you? And she giggled as I enacted being surprised. She turned a few pages of the comic in quick succession, then excitedly pointed to Alvin and the chipmunks. She explained to me that Alvin was cheeky and naughty. And when I asked what it was he did that was so cheeky, she thought for a moment, and then she pointed to images in the comic strip and, and described what was happening. She said, well, he takes that there and he puts where, where that stands there and he, and he banged on the window and that was really scary. Anya then noticed a word search in the catalogue and she began to look at the uh, page more intently. Um, she began to point out various letters that she recognised using both phonic sounds and letter names. She said, there's an A, there's S, there's I. Then she began to find matching pairs of letters. Uh, she said, there's an E and an E. So I said, oh yes, they match. So she pointed out four letter S's. So I joined in and I pointed out four letter T's. And we carried on taking turns. And when Anya pointed out M and M, we joked wishing that we had some M and M's. As the letter matching game naturally came to an end, um, um, I continued to browse the catalogue and, um, and Anya returned to the, the comic briefly. But then the image and logo for a VTech electronic toy caught her attention. And she announced that she had a VTech at home and she explained to me how it worked. And I listened intently with some regular and brief affirmations. Anya then returned to the comic again and another child approached, Ella. She looked over my shoulder at the catalogue where we'd reached the Disney princess page. Ella commented, naming some of the characters. Anya quickly turned her atten attention back to the catalogue. Um, the level of her voice raised and she became more animated, pointing to the images in, um, of the dressing up clothes. She said, oh, I love that. I really, really love that. That's amazing. I want that. I agreed that the dress was lovely and asked if it was Belle's dress from Beauty and the Beast. Anya agreed in a very authoritative manner. She said, yes, yes, that's Belle. I asked Ella which was her favourite character, but before she could answer, Anya leant over in front of Ella and said, <clears throat> and I love that, that's Rapunzel. I watched that on my DVD at my house and she's really, really brave. Yes, that's her, she said, pointing to the Rapunzel logo. I love her and her and her, pointing to each of the Disney princess dolls. Ella moved away and Anya's gaze followed her momentarily. Then she returned to the comic, singing quietly to herself whilst looking at the pages. I continued to browse the catalogue and after another minute or so, some, um, Anya noticed something happening across the classroom and she put down the comic and left the area. So this episode can be thought of as a literacy event and anyone with early years experience will recognise this as actually a very unremarkable everyday sort of occurrence that could have happened in any early years setting. It really is quite an ordinary event. Yet when analysed in depth, it's also quite extraordinary. It exemplifies the relationality of an everyday literacy event. It unfolded in these dynamic relations between Anya, me, Ella, and two multimodal texts. Each and every micro moment was interconnected. The images and the logos in the text shaped what Anya, Ella, and I did. Although it was the images and logos with some personal significance that, that had the most, um, the most significant impact. And of course, what each of us did was shaped and, sh and shaped by what others did. But here I focus on what was going on for Anya. And one of the things that surfaced in the analysis was how she worked, in fact, how she put considerable effort into initiating and sustaining the relationship, how she worked to make meaning with the text and generate and enact an identity position. So from the very beginning of the episode, she used the text to hide and she seemed to be wanting to catch my attention with her loud snoring. The goal appeared to be to evoke a reaction by jumping up and announcing that she tricked me. Then throughout the episode, she initiated most of the dialogue and most of the joint activity. 
And when I responded uh, by also la matching letters, for example, she sustained that interaction and continued the game. But she also used the images and logos to figure out what the text was about. So for example, when I asked what it was about Alvin that was so cheeky, she didn't really have an answer, but she used the images in the comic strip to construct an explanation that fitted. And she also seized the opportunity to speak with real authority on subjects that she knew, such as the VTech. And she demonstrated her knowledge of the alphabet by pointing out letters in the word search. Now, given that we were in a classroom environment, uh, letter knowledge is something that she may well have perceived as being particularly valuable. So Anya was in this constant flow of self-configuration, self-expression, self-positioning with the text. And then of course, when Ella arrived, she possibly, but we can't know for sure, but possibly she perceived that her position and the interaction with me was under threat. And at that point she upped her game and positioned herself as the expert on Disney princesses and enacted a very authoritative position. This slide was just one of 240 data items that I gathered during the study, which captured three and four year olds engagement with text of some sort or other. So in contrast to a deficit view of young children who are not yet readers and writers, this, da this data rendered visible the real complexity and sophistication in the ways in which three and four year olds engage with text and engage with others around a text. So looking beyond COVID, how young children can feel grounded in early literacy, these data illustrate that texts are not simply carriers of information. Every encounter with texts unfolds in the moment <clears throat> or in these moment to moment relations. And this in some respect echoes the work of uh, Kathy Burnett and Guy Merchant in their paper, Literacy as Event. Yet how it was interpreted and understood is rooted in each child's individual lift is history. And each encounter has the potential to shape how children configure understandings of the world and how they configure themselves in the world. However, generally speaking, it is adults who sponsor the texts and materials that are available to children in an earlier setting. And it's adults who hold these powerful positions in shaping what children can do or what they are expected to do in a literacy event. We really need to reconceptualize the role of text in the early years environment. Rather than including lots of printed material and um, environmental print and text making materials for the sole purpose of developing children's knowledge of print concepts um, or their decoding and comprehension skills. And just to be clear, I'm not suggesting that these things are unimportant. Um, of course, they're fundamental to children's learning and to their holistic development. But what I'm arguing for here is for a greater awareness of the broad personal, social and emotional benefits that can come from young children's encounters with text. There's a need to promote, to promote a view of literacy that values and legitimises all aspects of children's engagement with text, not that that not only that, that might lead to them achieving the early um, learning goals. Sorry about the phone, I'll ignore that. When the early years environment includes meaningful texts and materials that enable children to make connections between their home and community experiences, and when practitioners really listen to children and engage with them around a text, we can learn so much about their understandings of what's happening around them, their concerns and worries, their preferences and hopes, and we can sensitively scaffold and support their understandings of the world, and support their relationships and support their configurations of self. And this is where children's engagement with text becomes a vehicle for feeling grounded, feeling connected, and this is when it becomes a space for healing. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, please do get in touch at the email address here with any comments thoughts and questions.